Welcome to Agents and Owners Chit Chat, where we talk to local superheroes, hear how they got their start, overcame obstacles, and how they use social media to achieve their goals. For agent and owner social media tips, please visit www.gladmash.com. Here's this week's episode. Hi, right. hey, welcome to the Agents and Owners Chit Chat Show. Good afternoon or good evening or good morning, wherever you are, everyone. Today we have Mary Catherine Soulsby. Uh, she's joining us today uh, right here in Atlanta, and she's doing a fantastic job as a real estate agent, uh, again, here in Atlanta. So we wanted to have her on the show and give us some insight. And uh, welcome, Mary Catherine. Hi. How are you doing today? I'm so good. How are you? Excellent. Now, did I introduce you correctly? Did I miss anything? Real estate agent right here in Atlanta, right? Yeah, real estate agent right here in Atlanta. That's gotcha, gotcha. And what market do you serve up? Um, I go anywhere and everywhere in Atlanta. So I don't, I don't tend to limit myself. Um, it just depends on the client and um, what they're in need of. So gotcha. I've gone, you know, I can go from Ackworth, which is west, if you're looking at a map, west of Atlanta. And then I can all the way, I even have a client that, just bought out in Watkinsville so oh, wow. I can go I, those are literally opposite ends of wow. Atlanta <laughs> so um you know it just depends it depends on the client and um what they need yep. so we go to where the business is all right so how did you yeah, yeah right. so how did you get your start though and how long have you been uh in the real estate in industry and how did you start out so I have only been a licensed agent this is my second year so I am new, newer, I guess, to real estate. Um, although I've always been a lover, an absolute lover of real estate. Um, I built the current home that I'm in um, and I built the last home I was in. So I've done a lot of construction and, you know, understanding new construction and all that. And my husband and I have a serious obsession with checking out all the new neighborhoods and always have. Um, and so I've always been a lover of real estate, but, um, I did not get my start until my son was in middle school. So I was a stay at home mom and that was incredibly important to me and my husband when we, uh, started our family that I stay home and was just, that was my focus and, um, was my son. He went to middle school and I kind of felt like he needs me a little less. So, uh, real estate was kind of, you know, a dream I never really thought I could do. And then my husband convinced me to study and go take my tests and I passed and I was like, yay. And then I just hit the ground running. So sort of, yeah. uh, it didn't... Yeah, that's fantastic. Two years in and you're crushing it. Uh, so again, congratulations and hats off to you. There you go. Kudos for making the jump. So in the first year, so you're in two years so in the first year, I'm sure it was just a challenge, new industry, getting, you know, your feet wet and starting off. What were, you know, what were some of the obstacles that you had to overcome? So we have a lot of new real estate agents that will be listening to this as well. And I'm sure they're looking for clues. They want to make sure that they didn't make an incorrect mistake or a mistake or an incorrect choice, I should say, or a mistake, you know, jumping in. So what are some of the struggles that you had and obstacles, or if you can name one and how you overcame it? I think the biggest struggle is just recognizing that you're not going to learn anything about real estate in school. So um, everything you've learned past that test, you pretty much don't use. So I like, uh, I hate to say that, but that's the truth. Um, <laughs> you know, you just, the real estate school is just kind of teaching you the laws. We are a very heavy law state um, as compared to a lot of other states. Real estate agents here have to know a lot about real estate law. Um, so we we do tend to have to learn a lot of that. You do learn that in school. So that's always good to know. And then, um, but I, I would say you're going, just like you're going to make a ton of mistakes of and that's okay. And also like, learning from every single mistake. So every deal is going to teach you something new. Right. And I even started a notebook, my very first deal. Um, after it closes, I sit down for about 45 minutes and I write about that deal and I write what went right, what went wrong, what could I have done better? What did I learn? Because I learned something new in every single deal. And I have that notebook beside my bed and I, I just, I've written every single deal 
And that way I can go back and it's written down and I'm like, okay, well, I've dealt with this before. How did I handle it? And I also see how I'm progressing as a negotiator or how I'm progressing as an agent, how I'm treating people. Um, you know, that, that is so important because real estate agents are the gatekeepers in Georgia. We are the center and we kind of have all the people around us, but they are all part of our team. And without one of them, the deal cannot get to the table. And the ultimate goal is always to get to the closing table. That should be the goal of everyone involved, attorneys, titles, whatever, you know, lenders, um, other agents, uh, that the goal is to get to the closing table for your client. Um, so I think it's just incredibly important to always sit back and at the end of every deal, even if it went absolutely wonderful, not everything was perfect because no deal is ever perfect. Reflecting on that, learning from it and taking it into your next deal so that you can make sure you don't A, make the same mistake or B, you can just become better. Um, I am huge on ethics. I'm a huge, um, my first year, I will just say, I learned the agent I didn't want to be in my very first year. I think if you can learn the agent you don't want to be your first year, um, that's going to lead you to being successful in your next year. Because when you learn the agent you don't want to be, <laughs> then you become the agent you do want to be. Right. And, and that is different for everyone. It is vastly different for everyone. Um, so I think it's just important to become who you want to be and not, not fall into this. I have to be like her. Or I have to be like her, especially on social media when we see, you know, some of these big accounts where they're posting all this stuff and it's like, I'm never going to be able to do that, but you don't have to, like that doesn't need to be your path. So I think it's important. The biggest thing that I learned was in my first six months, I tried to be, I would say even in my first year, what? I tried to be somebody that I wasn't. And I just made the decision in 2021. I wasn't going to be that person anymore. I was going to be Mary Catherine. And either my tribe will find me, my clients will find me and they'll stick with me and they'll trust me. And they have. So awesome. Awesome. Definitely words to live by. So definitely got a lot of nuggets out of the answer. So thank you for being that so was long winded. Sorry. Nice. It was <laughs> robust though. So we appreciate that. So a couple of things that we, we pointed out. So, you know, you made your own reference guide, took notes and, you know, tried to learn off of your own mistakes. That's something that we're going to take back. Uh, teamwork is a key for you. So we've noticed too that in, in most deals, it, take, it takes an entire village to get to the closing table, like you said. So maintain positive, uh, good relationships with everybody that's involved into, into the entire process is definitely key. Uh, yeah. You talked about ethics, right? <laughs> Knowing that, hey, you know, the, the, the best thing to do is to do the right thing every single time. Um, and I'm sure both buyers and sellers. And it's beyond yeah. even that. It's not just about doing the right thing. It's about doing the legal thing. Um, and then it's also just about, um, you know, just because another person is shady doesn't mean you need to be. And I think that in this crazy market that we've been in in the last two years, um, the shadiness of some people has come out and it's very obvious. And so just as long as you recognize that and you, you recognize that in someone else and then you say, okay, I got to like protect my clients of and against this. And sometimes it's hard to do. Um, and then just having that honest conversation with your clients, you know, I am, I am so crazy honest with my clients. Like when I mess up, I just messed up really big last week. Like I missed something completely in a contract and she got one over on me and it is what it is. It didn't hurt anything, but it could have, right. and it was a lesson I needed to learn. Um, but this was also a huge client of mine, one that is liquidating a lot of her properties and tr has entrusted me. Right. And I, I didn't have to tell her that I made a mistake. I didn't, because it didn't hurt anything in the grand scheme of things, but I also couldn't not tell her. Right. So, you know, I gave her a call and I said, look, I, this got by me. And like, I, thankfully it didn't, 
I've just, I, it was something I'd never encountered before. And it was also something I would never do as an agent. So it was like, okay, I, I, I just said, look, I'm sorry. Like I, you know, this could have like hurt you and I've learned and, you know, and she was just like, Mary Catherine, it's not a big deal. Like, I'm like, I know. And, you know, but she appreciated that. What? you know, that's another thing, new age, like even old, like even the ones that say I've been doing this for 25 years or, you know, yeah. first of all, well, I rolled to that. If you have to say that, then we, we're, we ain't going to click because right. I don't care how long you've been doing something. Right. You should be learning something every day. Okay. Um, that goes in life in general. Uh, so I think like the biggest thing is just recognizing that it's okay to apologize to your clients because you're going to mess up. Like you're going to mess up. There is not going to be a single deal where you're not going to get something wrong um, or have a team member say, Hey, MC, you didn't do this. And now I need it now. Oh God, it slipped my mind. So, you know, it have it really establishing that honesty. That is so incredibly important to me with my clients. Um, and they trust me. Yeah, I was just about to say, I'm sure that clients appreciate that too. So we've seen that when there's a huge amount of transparency and self accountability, um, though, when you do that with those clients, those are the clients that will refer you like hands down, like night and day to their you know friends and family members, people they work with, because they're like, hey, you know what, Mary Catherine, she's, she's human, just like me, she's, you know, liable to make mistakes, but, you know, that's somebody that I could trust. Yeah. Uh, in marketing, we, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, getting your clients to know, like, and trust you, and if they don't trust you, um, it's hard for them to do future business, and more importantly, it's hard for them to, again, refer you to other people. You okay. know, I, I hear the no like, and trust you so much, and, you know, I, I hear it everywhere, and it, I, I like the saying, um, but I don't think all your clients are going to always like you. And I think that it's okay if they don't always like you. Um, I have had clients that I have had, you know, a husband and wife team fighting in front of me about what they want to do. And I have to slam my hands down and say, we're done. This is it. This is where we're going in. Like, this is my advice. Like we're, you know, and maybe the husband didn't really like me at that moment. Like, but then he loved me later on. Like your clients are not always going to like what you have to say, you know, especially sellers. They're not, not always going to like what you have to say. Um, reality is a house is only worth what a buyer is willing to pay for it. I don't care what that comp says. I don't care what that appraisal says. Reality is that a house is only worth what a buyer is willing to pay for it. So, you know, market value has a lot to do with it. But I think we put so much pressure on ourselves, especially on social media, to be uh, liked all the time. And if you are a hard negotiator, if you are a fighter for your clients, there may be times when they don't really like you. But at the end of the day, you're doing what's best for them. And sometimes what's best, they don't always like. So, and sometimes what's like reality, they don't always like, especially when it comes to sellers. But I will give just a little piece to new agents. The one thing that I do, and I offer this to all of my sellers, is I get the homes appraised. So it is, it comes out of my pocket. Um, it goes into the contract. I mean, when we sign an exclusive agreement, I get it appraised because I like to set expectations. I don't want to be three weeks into a deal and be having a conversation that we're going 75 because an appraisal came back $75,000 less. And then I have to have a conversation. So I have an appraiser that I work with. He does all of my homes. It doesn't matter if that house is two doors down from me and I live in the neighborhood, it's getting appraised because I want to set expectations. Then I also have, when an appraisal comes back to me, a way to battle back and say, look, these are the comps. But I, I also have that range where if you know a house appraises on my end for 460, and we decide to go up a little bit from that or lower than that to try to create some competition, there's a range where I, I'm like, okay, guys, but you understand that this is where our appraisal came in. Like, set those expectations. Be very clear with them. Sellers appreciate that. 
Um, and I've never had, I've never had a seller battle me on it. Um, but I also am very picky about my clientele. So I don't. Right. That's good too. And we're going to talk about that in a second too. So um, I think also, again, we, you brought it up earlier, just being transparent and straight up with your customers. So even if they don't like you, I'm sure that they respect. Yes. If you, you just kind of do the best. Like needs to be changed to respect. There you go. I that like that. Like yep. is just no respect and trust you we're gonna, we're yes. gonna we're gonna yes respect <laughs> you you just touched on another topic that's super important too so in marketing you know we often like to say that hey if you're advertising to everyone right and if everyone is your client then really no one is your client you're just shooting all over the place so how has trying to find you know your ideal client or your ideal you know seller or buyer impacted your business how, how do you, how do you go through the process of knowing in discovering, you know, who your ideal client is? Well, first of all, you need to not chase every single lead. So you need to, you know, I did that my first year and I missed an entire year of my son's life. I missed an entire year of my own life um, because I was just chasing, chasing, chasing. And I realized that I preferred quality over quantity. So I am never going to be the agent I'm just not going to be the agent that does 50 deals a year. It's just not, first of all, I don't have a goal to do that. And second, I don't believe that that's a good life work balance. So I, I, I know what goes into every deal and how emotionally stressful they are for the agents. So I think the biggest thing is not chasing every single lead, realize what like niche down, so I tend to sell between five hundred and nine hundred thousand dollars. That is my niche. I will go lower. Normally, I'm selling those homes, um, and the buyer, the people who are selling it, are upgrading. So, like right now, I'm just got a new client. We're selling her four hundred thousand dollar home, and she's upgrading to an eight hundred thousand dollar home. So, you know, while I'm so I've gone under my five hundred thousand, I'm keeping in that range. So. I don't tend to have buyers that are in the two, 300, even $400,000 range. I just choose not to do that because to me, I love that 500 and $900,000 range. I love those homes. I love negotiating those deals and um, I love looking at those homes. So, right. but I also don't want to go over a million. Okay. So, because that's a whole nother level of marketing right. that it just isn't me. Like, it's just not who I am. Like, I I could I could swing it. It's not that I couldn't do it. And I've gotten calls by clients. But sometimes when you get into those upper levels, they won't sign exclusive agreements with you. I'm not willing to do that. I'm not putting my time into something. You know, it's funny. I had an NBA player, a former player, actually say to me, um, I'll give you the listings, 4.5 million wow. in homes. Mm -hmm. I'll give you the listings. This was last year. Of course, as a newer agent, I'm like, oh my God, yes, you know. And he's like, but I'm not signing an exclusive agreement with you. And I'm like, uh, yeah, because yeah, yeah, that could go to two my next question was, did you step on that floor in the NBA? Because I'm a huge basketball fan. So I go. know, yeah. Did you step on that floor without signing a contract? Mm -hmm. No. Right. I know you didn't. So right. why are you expecting me to step on your property without signing well, a contract? Risking, with you? Like you said, risking all the time wasted for them to just go any anywhere with anyone with any other agent and like yes. all that they time can walk. Right. They can just walk. all of my clients sign nine to one year exclusive agreements with me and i've right. never had a client scream about like i've never had a client say i'm not signing a six, nine month to a year with you because number one they know i'm gonna sell their home quicker than that so we're not gonna have to worry about that and if we don't then if it gets to a point where it's six months in I'm doing something wrong and I will allow them out of that yeah. brokerage yeah. agreement. So that means something went vastly wrong um, because in the price range that I work six months, we like, we should have no problems. Usually three months, you know, even before we were in this crazy seller's market, three to four months for a six, seven, $800,000 home, you're good. Like you, you shouldn't be going past that. Yeah. yeah and I'm sure too, they they have no problem signing that too, because again, of that trust factor. Yes. So let's pivot for a second. So 
I'm sure that you're, you're building up a lot of trust online with your online reputation, right? And the reason that we were attracted to your account to begin with is, this, again, like I said at the beginning of the show, you're just crushing it on social media. So let's talk a little bit about that. Like, so what, it, and it seems like you're constant and definitely consistent. So how do you balance out, you know, staying active online, right? Having a family and having a, a thriving real estate career. How do you do it all? It's hard. <laughs> um, it's hard. I mean, I have batch days I create on, on certain days. Um, you know, I, I will get dressed up in the morning, do the makeup, do the hair, have 17 outfits ready to go. And I'm like, kill out, you know, a bunch. And then sometimes I'll do some on the fly. Cause I'll just find a, a funny one that's trending. You know, I am more than just a real estate agent. So it, it is, it's, Social media for me is all the things I want someone to look and see who they're working with, like in all aspects. I am a mom. I'm a wife. I'm a dog mom. I'm also an, a published author. I'm a real estate agent. I am all the things. And right. sometimes that gets hard because I'm like, well, what do I post about? But I'm also not that page where you're going to see a ton of houses, like I'm not, I just, there's so many other agents out there that do that, um, that I just don't feel like that's my message. Um, I do a lot of stuff on the back end with my clients. Um, you know, I'll post like a reel about the closing or, or just a picture of the house or, or a picture of them or something like that. But I do find that a lot of my clients don't really want to be on my social media. <laughs> so, um, and it, it's not anything bad. It's just, saying, yeah. Oops, so we've it's just that a well. choice, you know, it's, it's a choice of theirs and I respect that decision. And, you know, I do have some clients that aren't on social media at all. Didn't even find me that way. So, um, who've never even may have looked me up, but like, they just know when I walk in, I'm smiling, I'm happy. And when it comes to negotiating, I am super protective of my clients. So, um, but balancing, like, I mean, my husband's always like, yeah, are you on social media again? Like, cause I'm always scrolling reels, trying to get ideas and, um, you know, I'm always engaging. That's the other thing. Like Let's you, talk about gotta, the engagement. Yep. you gotta spend time. Social media ways. is social. Cool. You can't just like, post the reel and disappear all right bye like that's not how it works like i'm on and i'm posting i'm commenting you know i have alerts if somebody comments on my post i'm po i'm literally five seconds later i'm replying to that um you know even if i'm in the middle of doing something that to me is like a text message so you know you just a quick reply um one of the tricks that I do know that I learned from a social media coach that I follow, I follow a ton. That's the other thing. If you're okay. an agent, you need to follow coaches, follow coaches. You don't need to be paying for their information. Yeah. But get Most of them have it on there for free. <laughs> so gotta, it's gotta not, you. You'll have to pay for it. Just follow their yeah. stuff and they give you it. But one of the biggest things I learned about engagement is when you go to a post, on, especially on IG, because that's my thing. When you go to a post, like if you were, if I were to go to one of your posts, always in the comments, put their tag them. So right at Mary Catherine Soulsby, hi, blah, blah, blah. This is so funny. I love this, blah, 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 blah. Don't just comment, put their name, then a long comment, because that gets them more attention because it shows up in their, the in their, their yeah, because you wrote their name. You didn't just write like a plain thing. And right. then you shouldn't be leaving just one or two word things. Like yep. actually be social. Like, yep. do you say one or two? Think about it like when you're out to having drinks. Like, do you say one or two words? No, you're talking, like you talk. Mm -hmm. Like Talk like that on social media. Talk how you talk in real life. That's like- Now you hit it. So. It's all about being conversational for sure. And the thing that you just said is social media is social. We'll see a lot of um, you know, new new real estate agents who are, again, a little standoffish with social media. They'll post or be like, hey, Taz, can you help us just get our follow count up? And I'm like, hey, it's not really about follow count. No. It's about being, again, your, your true authentic self, which is something you mentioned earlier. 
and making sure that you're actually engaging with the people that are engaging with you the most. And, and look, I, I'm going to be 100% uh, transparent here. Yeah. I did very bad mistakes when I started my social media many years ago. And I, I did, I was bad. I, I did what a lot of people were doing back in, you know, 2019, paying for followers, trying to get that follow count up. And I am currently in the process of getting rid of all of those. So yeah. I actually paid someone to go through my page, wow. tell me who so were all these ghost followers. So like my count has already dropped by like 11,000 because right. I don't want those. I, that was what was used to be done. That's not what needs to be done anymore. So that is, it is so important that people understand that it is not like, even for me, I am trying, but I can only unfollow a certain amount of people a day. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's like, it just takes forever. Um, so I think at the end of the day, like when I had my whole count done, I I'm well in the 25, 30,000 thousand follower range of true followers. Um, but you know, I don't want just that. I want my tribe. Like I want, community my page is not just real estate i'm a woman i want to talk about self-love and positivity and you know that i'm i'm really leading down that road um of going that way with my social media and i've been trans like kind of turning it um mm -hmm. towards that and and then that way if someone finds me in real estate you know I think there's just, there is a space and a time for it. And I do like doing funny reels about it. And that's where you'll find most of my real estate is just when I do funny reels about it. Um, and, and some of the stories that I, I would love to tell, you also have to be very careful. In Georgia, we have ethics and we are not allowed to talk about other agents in a social media setting. So we have to be, you have to, you have to remember your ethic training as well. So sometimes that stops me from doing things about a deal that I'm like, you know, I really wish I could post about this, but I just don't think it's ethical. Right. So I kind of am, I, I, when it comes to my real estate, that aspect of my life, I take very seriously. Perfect. And I take my clients' confidences very seriously. So that, I think that's the other reason why you don't see a ton of real estate on my page. Um, but also people don't want to see real estate all the time. They don't. They want to mix. You know? so even and what they want is someone that they follow, that they enjoy following. And then when they're looking for a real estate agent, you're the person that pops in their head. They're like, oh yeah, Mary Catherine's a real estate agent. Let me reach out to her. Like the clients that I had last night, I gave them advice a year ago. Last November is when I gave them advice on an issue that they had, that they found out. Someone gave them my name. I gave them advice. I did a bunch of stuff for them, never thinking that I would ever have them as a client, just doing it because it's the right thing to do. I now am swinging to a probably $1.5 million deal just with this one client. So all because I answered my phone a year ago and, and just took an hour right. and listened to her, got her in touch with the right people. And then look where we are. So, right. you know, and when she called me, I was just like, Oh, that's weird. Why is she like, Oh gosh, what else happened? I was nervous about something else happening. Right. And right. then she was like, no, no, no. Like we're, we're ready. And I'm like, okay, let's do this. So, that's you know, like that, and it was because she knew that I would go to battle and, and ethically she had dealt with very unethical agents before. And so she wanted someone that she could trust and that would go to bat for her. So that, and that's me. So that she learned that in that hour conversation. Um, and then also my reputation is I mean, I've had people here listen to me like walking down Walgreens before when I've been trying to save a deal calling 15 people and I'll stand in Walgreens for two hours, not like flustered because I'm trying to save a deal. So, and they're like, oh, are you an agent? Yeah, here's my card if you ever need anybody. Cause they, uh, they hear me like I'm- You're the fighter. You're yeah, see. dude, I'm loud. Like don't, like, my husband's like, why didn't you go to your car? And I was like, cause I wasn't even thinking. Like all I could think was I need to save this deal. So like, I couldn't think where am I? Like nothing mattered, but my clients, all that mattered was my clients. So now we love to hear that. It's, it's very obvious that again, you have all these things going on. Uh, you know, 
all about your family, your author as well, but you're super passionate. That's the word I want to use. You're super passionate about uh, not just real estate, but you know, your, your client base, you know, making sure that they're getting the best deals, uh, things are within compliance, you're ethical, um, and we love, we love to hear it. So, yep, thank you for all those nuggets too, especially with the social media. Uh, a lot of our clients and a lot of new people come in and a lot of new real estate agents that we haven't even spoken to, they might be listening to this podcast or watching on YouTube and they're trying to figure out how to juggle everything. And they're probably posting, you know, 20 million just ha- pictures of houses on their feed and not doing a good job of mixing it up. Um, and we've noticed that clients love when they just realize that the person on the other end of the account is a real human being and they're relatable, right? And they mm-hmm. see you playing with your son, they see you at the beach, they see you cooking or you know, playing with the dogs, and they're like, hey, you're I- never gonna see me cooking. I can't cook. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'll be burning down the house if I'm cooking. So you're never gonna see me cook. Mm-hmm. But no, I agree. Yeah, I think yeah, they don't see that you're just you know relatable. Yeah. You You gotta, you gotta, you can't, because the other thing is people are going to remember you for like those other things. And then when they need a real estate agent, they're going to be like, oh yeah, let me reach out to her and, and, or him. And that's how you get them. Like you just have to, you're always in their face and consistency is, 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 it's hard. It's dude, it's hard to post all the time. Like I trust me, there are times where I'm just like, I'm done. And the other thing is it's okay to take a break. I think the biggest thing is for social media is you need to post what feels right for you. Don't post just to post post like, because you want to like get something across or, you know, don't post that a blog. Like I can't say that word that obligatory i'm not saying that word yeah, <laughs> that obligated i can say obligated i can say that word. that yeah. obligated like closing picture of you standing with the key like <laughs> right i'm Be glad you have closings it's great that's awesome but you're not gonna see that on my page it's i think i've done one of those and i turned it into a reel yeah. um everybody knows like those are pictures the clients are putting on their pages that's those pictures are about your client let them have them you know let like let them do that that that's them because it's all about them on that issue and not like your page shouldn't be full of keys and like you like okay yeah you had closings like obviously you've had close like i don't think i've shared but one closing i've had this year like i just don't like but it's not like i'm not working i just don't like it's just those are moments i also feel like it's like we don't have to share every moment like enjoy the moment that you're in and when i go to closings with my clients like i'm all in i'm not thinking about taking pictures or doing a reel or a video or an ig live in the moment i I'm in my moment. Like I'm enjoying the fact that I just like nailed this. Like, like, cause it could have been like a really awful deal, you know, like everything fell apart behind the scenes and they didn't know that. So enjoy those moments. Don't, don't, um, don't lose them because you want to post the perfect picture of your closing or show like I had another closing. Like we know you're having closings, you're a real estate agent. It's what you do. It's like, my husband if he was like every file he closed taking a picture of the file like well dude you close like five million worth of files a year like we don't need to see all that like that that's the biggest thing and I think just be proud of your work but really just be proud of yourself like and be real like don't like don't be something you're not Like, I think I just changed my profile, like bio to like talking about like be pot being positive and like just talking about the real poop that goes on in life because nobody, nobody wants this like picture perfect. This deal went so perfect. Look, we could, you know, it damn well, sorry. You know, it dang well did not go perfect. You were on the phone dressing out, drinking, doing your thing. That's going to keep exercising 12 hours a day. If that's what makes your stress go away. Like it's okay to talk about those things, but staying within your ethical boundaries. So, um, you know, I just think it's important to just enjoy those moments with your clients and, and give them your attention and don't make it about why well, I need to post this on social media. Um, make it about them. 
because that's that's really what well, that's really what it's all about it's, it's and it's that the other thing is like don't make it about like these gifts that you give them my clients have never gotten a single gift from me did you know that i didn't know that yeah i have never given a single closing gift in my entire yeah. two years. i've never done it and i've never had a client ask me but what I have done is we go out to dinner and we celebrate and we are with each other and we have drinks and I go visit their house or I have them over to my house and, or me and my husband go over and we see the house after they've redecorated. Um, I text them, send me pictures of what you did to the living room. That's what your clients want. They don't want something that's going to fill up their house. They have enough crap, likely. They want you, you, like they want like your care, your, like your camaraderie. Well, bigger than that too, Mary Catherine, it sounds like, you know, for, a gift is a gift, but once you leave an experience with someone, they're going to remember that for the rest of their life, right? So you going out to dinner, wherever it might be, having drinks, chit, you know, chit-chatting it up and laughing, that, that's what they're going to remember that, hey, you know what, Mary Catherine took, took time she just didn't give me a bottle of champagne and then disappeared, right? <laughs> she took time with my family. She came through. And in that moment, you're showing that you truly care about yeah. it. Yep. And that's what it is. Done. It's all about the experience. You need all to make it all about them. You could give the $400 gift or the $500 gift or whatever. And, and that's amazing. I think it's great. But you know, when I built my house, my agent gave us our blinds. Like right. she put blinds throughout our whole house. We had a new construction house, so it doesn't come with blinds. So she, that was her gift. You know that after the day of closing, I never heard from her again. I'm happy that she gave us our blinds, then I had to pay for them, but I would have paid for them. Like I would have rather have had that relationship with her. Like I would have rather her check in. I would have loved for her to come in after I finished decorating it and right. see how gorgeous it was. Because that's the, the unique thing about being the agent is you see it before they get to put their hands on it. And they are so proud to that show is. you what they do afterwards. And it is that experience that they remember because when that person, when they have someone over at their house and they're sitting there and they're having a, a get together, even when you're not there and someone's like, oh, well, like who helped you find this house? Oh my God, so-and-so did. And she was just here and she was telling me like, she gave me advice on this or that. You know, that is what, that's what they remember. They don't that's remember exactly. that little, I don't know, thing or whatever you would give them. Or a cactus. That little bag that says like, welcome home. Yeah, we've seen that's it all. Stuffed in a drawer because they moved and they don't remember it. Right. And I mean, I don't have the clientele where I'm giving, you know, Louis Vuitton crap to. I'm sure there are clients out there that get gifts like that. I give experiences and that's what I give. And I don't, I, I don't, I work hard and I, I'm confident in how hard I work. And so I think a lot of agents find it funny that I don't give the closing gifts, but, and you know, who knows, it could cost me somebody. I don't know, but you know what? That's so, okay. Yeah. Hey, here's the thing. You're still being your true authentic self. Exactly. And that's what, that's what matters the most. So we definitely appreciate it. Thanks for giving us all the tips for sure. We've come to the end of our chat, but if there are any clients, right, potential clients out there listening, or even other real estate agents uh, that you know want to get in touch with you, how can they find you? And let us know what else is happening. So I know you're also an author. So if you want to plug that as well, tell us a little bit about I that. I would love to plug that. Yeah, let's so, take all that. <laughs> um, so yes, I just wrote my first book, published my first book in a trilogy. Very different. It's a fiction, um, like kind of romance sexy novel. Um, so it's called Tempting Vows and you can get it on Amazon. Um, I've been wanting to do it for 10 years and real estate gave me the confidence to be who I want to be and be authentic. And I finally put my head down and stayed up till four o'clock in the morning and wrote a book with my editor. So um, my second book will come out in December, the second in the series. So I do that on top of real estate. Um, so yeah, that is one of my big things. I think the best way to get in touch with me is through Instagram. Um, I at Mary Catherine Soulsby, very simple. Um, 
you know, I have other endeavors that, that are coming. I'm a big believer in multiple streams of income. So, um, you know, I have other things I've dreamed of doing and I'm finally taking those steps to do them. And I think if anything right now, just like go do it. You know, there's this reel out there. It's like, go do the thing, like do the thing, do the thing. Mm -hmm. Like no one can tell you no, but yourself. And like, that's kind of the biggest thing and where I would leave it. Um, they can get a hold of me on Instagram. I would love to chat with new agents, give them advice, go to coffee, um, you know, tell them all the stupid things I did my first year. And I did a lot of stupid things um, and what I regret um, and wish I hadn't done instead of saving money. Uh, and so, you know, I think there's a lot of things and just even give advice on brokerages and because I've been with two and the one I'm currently with Atlanta Communities um, I love and give reasons why I love them. Um, so yeah, I, anybody, I, I'm always there, especially for newer agents to chit chat with, um, and, and give advice to, and, and help guide in any way that I can. Cause it's hard. And I didn't have anybody. I had no one. Right. It was all me. So I, I wish I had a me <laughs> that, I could, that I could like, you know, talk to and, and all that. So Mary Catherine Soulsby on Instagram, I, that's your best bet is DM me or even scroll down. You'll see one of my signs and it's got my cell number on there. So, and she yeah. is responsible folks. So she's super responsive. That's how we got it. I am. And she's very willing. So we'll you see. have to be responsive. That's the thing. There's no, you don't, you can't do real estate and not be responsive. Yep. period. No sales job. Can you do without being responsible? Well, you really should just be responsible because it's just nice. Yep. So. All right, Mary Catherine, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining yeah, Thank us. you. We'll be in touch. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thanks for listening. Agents and Owners Chit Chat is produced by Gladmash. To be featured or sponsored or to sign up for Agents and Owners free social media tips, please visit www.gladmash.com.